Welcome to week three of Introduction to Linguistics. This week we're going to study phonology, which focuses on the mental representation of the sounds of human languages. What do we mean by mental representation? So last week we talked about phonetics. We studied the physical properties of sounds. For example, we looked at what your tongue was doing, what your lips were doing, and I'm going to use my science piece of paper here to demonstrate the difference between these two objects. This one is a P without aspiration, and this one is a P with aspiration. This one is pa, this one is pa. The second one has a strong puff of air. And in English, we have these sounds. This one occurs in the word spot, spot. This one, the aspirated one, is the first sound of the word pot, spot, pot. So you can see that physically, they are two very different uh, you know, physical realities. They have different motions of your mouth. However, mentally, we think that both of those are just different kinds of Ps, that there's one mental representation called a P, and that both the unaspirated and the aspirated one are just two different personalities of this same mental reality that we call a P in English. So phonetics studies the physical aspects of sounds and phonology studies how we organize sounds, how we sometimes think that the, the two sounds are actually the same sound. And sometimes we think that two sounds are actually different sounds. Take a look at this example from English. So English has the phonemes S and ESH. This one is the first sound in the word SIP. This one is the first sound in, this, in the word SHIP. We, last week we wrote them with a, a square bracket to represent that they were just sounds. This week we're upgrading these to a slanted line, to a slash, to mean that these are phonemes of English. They are mental representations of sounds. How do we know they are phonemes? Because if we switched the sounds, if we changed S for this one, then you would get ship. You would get a different word. We call these words minimal pairs. They are a word where if you change the sound for something else, the word would mean something else. So sip changed to this becomes ship. These two words are minimal pairs and the two sounds are phonemes of English because they help us distinguish between meanings. One uh, important thing about phonemes is that you know that they are different because they occur in the same environment. We call an environment the sounds that surround a phoneme or a sound. For example, if we have S in SIP, this little S here has the word etch before it. We're going to represent that with a pound sign. And it has the, uh, the sound I after it. We're going to, to write that one. So S occurs in an environment where it is preceded by the edge of a word and it is followed by A. Notice that in this data set, the second word has the, ex uh, in the second word, the sound ESH has the exact same environment. It is preceded by the edge of a word and it is followed by A. So these two share an environment and because they both happen in the same environment, we know that they are different. So if you're in a room and you see Batman and Superman in the same room, you know they are different because you're seeing them in the same context. You're seeing them in the same environment. Uh, here, sip and ship both occur before uh, the edge of a word and uh, followed by an E. And the most important part, when you switch one for the other, you change the meaning of the word, as in sip and ship. So you find minimal pairs between these two sounds. So that's what it means for something to, to mean. Uh, that's what it means for something to be a phoneme. Let's look at these two sounds in a different language. How about Korean? Korean. This is, these are nine words from Korean. For example, we have sanam for person, set for three, and shigan for time or hour. My first question to you is: Do you see any minimal pairs between s and sh in this Korean data set? Are there any words that are identical except 
that one has S and the other one has Esh. Please pause the video and take a look. Nope, we don't have any minimal pairs. If we had something like Sigan, for example, then it would be a minimal pair with Shigan. And then we would know that S and Esh are two different phonemes, that they can change the meaning of a word. But we don't see that. So if we don't find minimal pairs, the next thing we need to do is to try to figure out the environments for the different sounds. So I uh, got this started. For example, this is the sound S and this is the sound Esh. And in example number one, you see that the S is preceded by the edge of a word and it's followed by the letter A, as in saram. Example one, preceded by the edge of word, followed by an A. In example number six, you see that we have an esh that is preceded by the end of a word, and by the edge of a word, I'm sorry, and it is followed by an E. I apologize. Um, as you can see, this is the environment where you find the sound esh in example six. So I want you to try to figure out all of the other environments. So I want you to go one word at a time, try to find if that word has an S or an Esh, and then write the environment here for each of them. Uh, by the way, please ignore the first sound here because this is not an Esh, this is an affricate. It's a compound between the T and the Esh. So except for this first sound in number nine, um, try to find where you see S, Esh, and go ahead and derive the environments. Please pause the video. All right, so you should have something that looks a little bit like this. You have um, example number one, that we have already seen. In example number two, we have the S preceded by nothing, by the edge of a word, and followed by the E. Eh. In example number three, we have the S preceded by the edge of a word, and followed by an U. So for word number four, sum. And for word number five, we sung, we find the S preceded by an I and followed by an U. Uh. So as you can see, there's all sorts of vowels that can come after an S in Korean. And it can happen at the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word. How about ESH? It can happen at the beginning of a word and in the middle of a word, but do you see any patterns here? There's only one vowel that can follow an ESH, the vowel E. Indeed, we have the same, the left part of the environment is the same for these two. Like, but they both can occur at the beginning of a word, for example, as in saram and shigan. But only esh can occur before an, the sound e. So you never find an s that is followed by an e at the beginning of a word or that is followed by an e in the middle of the word. If you see an, this uh, sound after one of these two sounds, it can only be esh. We call this configuration complementary distribution because when you see one, you don't see the other. Like Clark Kent and Superman, you know that uh, they're the same because you never see them in the same room at the same time. So in Korean, whenever you see uh, an environment for an esh, like you're followed by the sound E, you will only find an S. You will never find the S. These two sounds are in complementary distribution because they happen, they occur in different environments. So what do we have? That both languages treat these two sounds differently. In English, S and S are separate phonemes because we can use them to contrast words like sip and ship. However, in Korean, we don't have that. We don't have minimal pairs where uh, you can switch S by ESH and change the meaning. What we have is two personalities of the same mental reality. We're going to call it S because that's the one we found the most examples of. And we're going to have a phoneme that is S that is going to have two personalities, which we're going to call allophones. The phoneme S has the sound S, which is everywhere except in this circumstance. The sound S becomes ESH when it is followed by the sound E. So this sound becomes ESH in this particular environment and it remains S 
everywhere else. These are two personalities of the same mental reality, called an S in Korean. So as you can see, sounds can, you know, languages can organize sounds differently. What is, uh, two minimal, what is two phonemes in English can be one phoneme in Korean. We have uh, a kind of words called minimal pairs, which are identical except for one sound, like sip and ship. We can use these to detect whether something is a phoneme or not. If we don't find minimal pairs, we can try to figure out the environments where a sound occurs. And if we find that those environments are in complementary distribution, that they're different from one another, we're going to call those sounds allophones because they're two different personalities for the same sound in different environments. In the next video, we're going to look at this the other way about a sound that is only one phoneme in English and two phonemes in Hindi and Urdu.